We thank God for his guidance and his mercy for sending to us his servants, the prophets, and the apostles. We thank him for the way of holiness that's written for our learning and our understanding. Before going any further, if there's any sisters standing back there, there's some seats up front. You can bring them, let them get seated. And if there's uh, our young brothers can stand and our old brothers can remain seated. To all of our ministers, to our guests, we're sorry we don't have enough room. It's a good size auditorium, but truth have a tendency of collecting a whole lot of fish, you know. Amen. 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 Every place we go, we run out of room in so many places because people are hungry. And uh, what's that? I'm on mute? All right. Let me reach back down here, get this right, and make sure that. Am I good now? Mm hmm. <laughs> I thank Brother Minister Cole for those kind, fiery <laughs> remarks <laughs> to all the ministers that are here and to my wonderful brothers and sisters of New York and you that are visiting from other locations, we thank God that you took the time out to come. I often say over the air, I wish I was a millionaire, I'd be able to plant churches quicker. The devil moved fast. You trying to do it right, man, you gotta fight and do everything else, but we are grateful for God's goodness. We were in Jamaica uh, last week, and God knows we had a time. Amen. Baptized 39 in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. They claimed the auditorium could hold 2,000, but it couldn't. There was what the cameras couldn't show you. They had to set chairs all on the outside of the building and let the chairs wrap around the building and set speakers outside because no one else can get in. When we first started the work in Jamaica, we had no more than seven to eight people. Now we have over 2,000 and still growing. Still growing. I'm convinced you do not have to change your strict Holy Bible standard just to gain souls. Men have changed who used to be firm and strict. But I have said to people moreover, we're not changing nothing. If God said it, we believe it, Amen. and we're not changing from it. Yeah. Before that, we were in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We baptized 93 <laughs> in the name of the Lord Jesus. I was in Detroit Tuesday of this week all day. God bless us. We made settlement on our new Detroit temple. Thank God for that. From Detroit, we flew to Mobile, Alabama. The congregation then outgrew that small church we had there, and the Lord bless us with a beautiful large temple, over about close to 12,000 square feet, sitting on three acres of land. So the work there has gone on beautiful also. So New York, we're still looking. We're still looking to try to find something in Bronx or nearby or in Yonkers or somewhere where I can kill you close range. <laughs> Amen. Because if anybody been following this program, you know you're going to get shot. Close range shot. I 
thank God for our mothers. I love to see our older mothers and the older brothers. It's a beautiful thing when I see them still contending for this one faith. Well, God willing, this weekend coming, we'll be in Baltimore. And I do hope that many of you can come stop in at the Baltimore Church Anniversary, give them some support. After that, I'll be in uh, Norfolk, Virginia for the combined anniversary of Norfolk, Port Smith, Newport News, Fredericksburg, Virginia churches. After that, I'll be in Dallas, Texas, grabbing the devil by the horns, if God willing. <laughs> Rasta you to the ground. After that, God willing, I'll be in Nassau, Bahamas, over there. And let us remember our brothers and sisters in Freeport, Bahamas, because uh, I believe the count is still growing. Over 40 something, the Lord killed. I can't say the devil did it, the Lord did it. God controlled the wind, God controlled the earthquake, God controlled the rain. Let us get a clear understanding. I keep telling people everywhere, God proves to you, you don't own nothing. Amen. You don't own nothing. I don't care what car you drive, what house you have, size bank account. God can bring a wind, blow your house down, bring a flood. I was looking at the news and it was talking about the White House. There was a leak there. <laughs> leak in the White House. Just letting Trump know, I can get to you regardless of where you're at. Amen. As soon as the human family realize that all of us that are here and that are not, we were made for one thing, for God's glory. Amen. We must thank him because it is his mercy that brought us here. Amen. It is his mercy that's keeping us here. Amen. Nobody belongs to themselves. Amen. Did you hear what I just said? You're not your own. You may think you're your own man or your own woman that's just deceiving you. You're not your own. The little breath you have now that's in your old nostrils. Your body is equal to a place that you rent or lease. Eventually your time, your physical body will expire. You will go the way of all flesh, white man, black man, yellow man, brown. You may be a half bigot now, but let me educate you. I keep saying moreover, there's not a racist worm in the world. I have never met a worm that's made just for black folk when you die. I have never met a worm that's just made for white folk. When you die, the worms will feast sweetly upon your corpse. You are made for God's glory. Who, Pastor Janice? Everybody. Doesn't matter how rich, how poor, how broke, how honest, how dishonest, everybody was made for God's glory. So then, <coughs> that's what got me traveling. I'd be in Australia in about a month and a half, and be in Perth, and then be in Sydney, and then we'll be in Africa, then come up to South Africa to Johannesburg and pound the devil there. We have we ready to start a new work now in Dubai. And God willing, we'll be in Alaska next year. We'll be in about three different cities in one month in Canada. I'm busy, we don't have time for foolishness, we are busy trying to wake men and women up. Because you're more hard head than cattle. Yeah? Oh, yes, your man is more hard head than cattle. Just look at your Bible. God did not destroy the world with a flood because of cattle. 
There was no hard head cats or dogs or sheep. Every beast, every roach that God made, every snake, every species that God made do exactly what God made them to do. Every time of year, the wildebeest of Africa take the same trail and take that trail and the alligators know. They know when to just sit back and wait because they know God going to give them a good meal. The snake shed its skin the same time every year. And it never rubbed its skin up against something that soft. Even the intelligence of the snake knows to get rid of the old skin. It got to rub up against something hard. I'm saying that to tell you this, New York. We have been exposed for years to this sugar diabetes preaching. This watered down version of the Bible. Which make it difficult for us to shed off the old man. So God bring holiness to the people. It been here. We just was walking around professing something else. Baptists and Methodists and Presbyterian and Lutheran. When we preached in Jamaica, my opening statements was the only people going to be with God is holy people. Why did I say that? My God, man, people start making comments about the programming. Emails came in. Someone wrote and said, if you think... <laughs> Only your church is going to be in heaven. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. The Bible said, blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection. That was written before I was born. <laughs> Only holy people. What is holy people, Pastor Jennings? Them that have repented of their sins, baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ, have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, and striving to live by the teaching of Jesus, which is the teaching of the apostles, and not deviating from the left or right, and follow that to the letter. Are you getting what I'm telling you? They laid me out and said, you got to be out your mind if you think no Baptist or Methodist going to be there. As I said before, so say I now again, the Bible did not say blessed and Baptist is he. Blessed and holy is he. Blessed and non-denominational is he. He didn't say that. No. It didn't say blessed and Mormon is he. The Bible speaks plain. Bless. Give chapter and verse for this. I don't want folk to think I'm conjuring up something. Revelation chapter 20 and at And I don't six. want you to think Williams is trying to conjure up something because no. he used to be a Trinitarian. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, no. Amen. No. Now you, uh, that, that's not having an effect on the scriptures, is it? No, no way, Pastor. No. One, two of the gods ain't talking to you today. No, 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 no. So we all right, aren't we? We're we all right. Glory to God. All right, Williams, give chapter and verse. Revelation chapter 20 and at verse 6. Solomon. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. That's not Geno Jennings preaching. No. Holiness is the only belief that been here before the world. That's right. I want to say what? You That's check right. out any religion. Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Mormon, Muslim, Jehovah Witnesses, everybody out there got a date yeah. when they started. Yeah. And all of them do. Yeah. Holiness go back further than the world itself. According as he has chosen my, us. My, my, my. Ain't nobody can go back that far. No. Give chapter and verse for this, Williams. Now in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and at verse 4. So don't blame it on Pastor Jennings. That's right. Pastor Jennings wants you to come to his holiness. I don't have no holiness. That's right. And if, here, here now, if we left up the geno, <laughs> I wouldn't preach holiness. No. My brother and sister that's in the back that are standing, if you want to come up closer, there's some seats up here. If you want to come up closer, you can. Amen. If you want to come up closer, there's some seats back there, uh, up in the front. 
Listen at this now. In Ephesians chapter 1 and at verse 4. All right. According as he hath chosen us in him. Focus on the language of the book. I want them to notice what it says. According to as he. He. He who? God. Hath chosen us in him. When? Before the foundation of the world. And what did he choose us to be? That we should be holy. That justify what I've been telling you. That's right. No body religion go back that far. That's right. Before the world was. Amen. So when I tell the whole world by God's permission, some folks say, but why do you sound so mean, Pastor Jenny? <laughs> Ignore how I sound. Amen. Pay attention to what God make me say. That's it. My job is to represent God. That's right. And if I preach the word of God right, mm -hmm, <laughs> the word is called fire. Oh, yeah. The word is called sword. Yeah. The word is called hammer. Yeah. And the word is called axe. Yeah. Uh, ain't nothing nice about an axe. No. Mm -mm. Nothing nice about a sword. Mm -hmm. Nothing nice about a hammer. Mm -hmm. And just so happen God make me preach until it fall on you like a hammer <laughs> and it cut you like a sword and I have to use an axe so I can cut the source of your wickedness. That's right. If you want a tree to stop growing, grind the stump down. Amen. Don't just cut the limbs. You got to remove the stump. Oh, yeah. That's why the Bible said the act is laid at the roots. All right, I want to go to work today mm -hmm. on the characteristics of Judas. Amen. Mm. I want everybody to pay attention and judge yourselves because... Judas may be sitting among you. That's right. Judas may be in the pulpit. Amen. Judas was one of the men whom the Lord chose mm -hmm. to be an apostle. That's right. Judas was a disciple of Jesus. Judas also had a role to fulfill in prophecy. That's right. I want to explain to you of the Judas in the Bible of the past. And then we want to look at this modern Judas. That's right. Because Judas is still among us, you know. Oh, yeah. The characteristics of Judas did not start here. There's a key statement that the Bible says about Lucifer, mm -hmm. and it repeats itself about Judas. That's right. Lucifer, in the beginning, was a righteous angel. I say, I didn't know that. I thought that Lucifer was the devil. <laughs> Lucifer, in the beginning, was a righteous angel. That's right. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28. I want 28. everybody to follow me. I want to take you to school this afternoon. That's it. You can shout next year. Mm -hmm. Right now, I want you to get this. Amen. Follow me and hear me. First in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28, and at verse 13. Yes. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. Yes. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the ox, and the jasper. Uh -huh. The sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. Yes. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes uh -huh. was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Hold it. Let me destroy the myth of Lucifer. Let's stop thinking of Lucifer of some man in a red tight suit <laughs> with horns and a curly tail. Let us also rid ourselves of the Bible college myth of Lucifer, of being the choir director mm. in heaven. That's right. You old liar. That's right. Bible ain't never said he was directing a choir in heaven. No. Are you listening to the old man? Amen. Follow me. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes. Now, God is not describing the devil. Right. He's describing the angel named Lucifer. Lucifer. Follow me in the Bible. Listen at this. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes uh -huh. was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. The pipes of Lucifer, the pipes 
of the angel was not talking about a pipe organ. No. If you focus on the language of the scriptures, it says the pipes that was prepared in thee, in the thee. pipes of a man and the pipes of the woman is the voice of the man and the voice of the woman. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. So his voice, his pipes was prepared in thee by who? By God. Right. Again, he's not talking about the devil yet. He's talking about Lucifer, the angel that was made holy right. in the day God created him. That's right. Listen. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Wait a minute. That devil's not anointed? No. Thou art the anointed cherub. cherub. Thou art the anointed angel that covereth. And I have set thee so. God said, I set you like this. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Now, the Bible describing his authority. He was upon the holy mountain of God. That means God had him in a place of authority. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Yes. Thou was perfect. Wait a minute. Did you hear this? Thou was perfect. Thou was perfect. Thou was complete. What? In thy ways. Thou the, was complete or perfect in thine ways. From the day. From the day. That thou was created. That you were made. Till. Till. Iniquity was found in thee. When iniquity was found in Lucifer, in that's the fall of Lucifer. Someone said, well, who made the devil? God did. God, that's right. God? Yes. God said, I create good and I create evil. Now, when God made Lucifer, Lucifer was holy. Yeah. When Lucifer, when iniquity or Satan or the devil found. was found in him, Indeed. the devil took something from Lucifer. And Lucifer took something from the devil. That's right. What did Lucifer take from Satan? His character. That's right. Because the character of Lucifer, first, he was righteous. Right. He'd done God's will. But what did he take from Satan? Satan's character. Now, Satan's character transformed Lucifer. What did Satan take from Lucifer? Satan took a name from Lucifer that he never had. That's right. Satan wasn't called Lucifer. No. Satan was called Satan or Abaddon. Abaddon. Or Apollyon, the wicked one, the accuser of the brethren. That's the right. prince of darkness or the prince of the air. Right. Those are titles. That's right. The serpent, the great red dragon, titles. Yeah. But now he took on a name. That's right. So most people actually thought Lucifer was Satan all the time. No. Oh, no. no. Listen at the language of the Bible. Thou was perfect in thy ways. What? From the day that thou was created. Then what happened? Till iniquity was found in thee. Till. When iniquity is found in you, you change. That's right. Now, That's right. after iniquity was found in him, war, war. broke out in heaven. Mm -hmm. And where there's war, there's confusion. That's right. And the book says God is not the author of confusion. Right. Satan was put out and comes to the earth, and the apostles talks about the descending of Satan mm -hmm. and said, whoa, unto the inhabitants of the earth. I beheld Satan fall from heaven as lightning. lightning. When Satan fell to the earth, chaos, mm. wickedness, hate, evil, and hypocrisy and vindictiveness oh, hey, man. followed him. That's right. Satan could not defeat God. No. And Satan was angry with God of being put out. So to get back with God, he's put out, come to the earth, and now declared war on all of God's people. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens. Listen. Now in the book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 12. Rejoice, heaven. And ye that dwell in them. And ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Woe don't sound like he's happy. Oh, no. 
Woe is like a sound of an alarm. That's right. He's letting you know, whoa, look out, something's going to happen. Beware. That's right. Whoa. To, to the inhabitants to the of the earth. Inhabitants of the dwellers of the earth. And of the sea. And of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you. The devil is come down unto you. Having great wrath. He's angry. Oh, yeah. The devil is angry at God. And if he's angry at God, it would be foolish for God's people to think the devil love you. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. If he hate God, and he does, oh, yeah. then he hate you. That's why his objective is, is to bring all of God's people down with him. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Listen. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Yeah. For the devil has come down unto you. The devil has come to you. Having great wrath. Having great wrath. Because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Wait a minute. He so knows. if the devil know he that knows. his time is short. Oh, yeah. The clock is ticking on him. That's right. He's motivated to do more. That's right. Because his time is short. Now, let me show you how successful the Bible shows us the devil is and will be. Mm -hmm. There's more loss. And I believe Estrus talks about this or the wisdom of Solomon. Yeah. There's more loss than save. Oh, yeah. New Jerusalem lie four square. The length and the breadth and the height of the city that the Lord went away to prepare for the church are equal. And Yet there's a number that no man can number that would make the first resurrection. But now you're talking about hell. Hell, the Bible said, hath enlarged herself, meaning hell became expanded. Yeah. It became larger because there are more people lost than saved. Even church people. Oh, yeah. God talk about those that used to be his people. He said he won't come until there is a great falling away. That means many of those that were baptized the right way in the name of Jesus Christ and actually have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, the devil going to pluck many of them right up out of the church. Let no man deceive you. How is he going to do it? Sometimes the devil can actually place people in your life and their closeness blind you to their agenda. That's right. The only one you should be close to more than anything and anybody is God. That's right. If you're close to your brothers and sisters, all right, but it should be reasonable space there. Yeah. Enough space that if they turn against God, your closeness with them don't influence you to join them in their rebellion against your Lord. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. So there will be more loss than saved. Satan or hell hath enlarged herself. 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 And Esther tell us about this. Mm -hmm. And through the Bible it talks about straight and narrow is the way and few that be that find it. But broad is the way that leads to destruction and many that be that go in there at. All right, listen now. Now in the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 2. Yes. Uh, verse 3. All Let right. Let no man deceive you by any means. Hold it. We come here to serve God. That's right. All of us were privileged to hear the message of holiness. All of us. No. Because it's a privilege to hear the teaching of God. We should not abuse the privilege. 
All down through the Bible, there's always a point in time that God sends someone to alarm that generation. Some will hear, some will not. Some will obey, some will not. In the days of Noah, they heard, but didn't listen. Did you hear what I just said? Right. They heard, but they didn't listen. What's the difference between hearing and listening? The difference between hearing and listening is the same as reading and studying. You can read, but that don't mean you're studying what you read. If I study what I read, that's a whole different approach to my reading because now I'm trying to itemize in detail and really abstract from the contents of the book. That's right. And if you ask me, what did you study? I can relate and repeat what I studied and researched. But if I read and not really into what I'm reading, you ask me, what did you read? Well, something about something. <laughs> so the Bible says, he that have ear to hear, let him hear. What the Spirit said to the church, then the Bible says, take heed how you hear. So when you're in God's house, you just don't want to hear, you want to listen. And study self based upon the contents of the book that you're listening to. That's right. And see today, are you a Judas or do you know a Judas? Are you close to a Judas? Or is there a Judas in the pulpit of your location? Is there a Judas in your prayer meeting? Is there a Judas in the brotherhood meeting? Oh, this, this is good. Now in the book of 2nd Esther chapter 8 and start at verse 1. 2nd Esther 8 and 1 says, And he answered me saying, The Most High hath made this world for many. The Most High made this world for many. But the world to come for few. That's self-explanatory. That's right. This world right here is made for many. That's right. But the world to come, the new heaven and the new earth is made for who? For a few. Only a few going to be saved. Mm -hmm. There be many created. There be many that's created. But few shall be saved. I told you. That's right. That's plainly written. That's right. Few will be saved. Why? Because many want to serve God with strings attached and you want to bring stipulations to God. Listen how foolish the human family is. That's right. You don't work for a job for you to bring your rules. Yeah. You abide by company policy. And you stay with the job. And if you stay there, you're going to cooperate with company policy. Right. If you want to be saved and want to be right with God. You're going to have to be compliant to scriptural policy. That's right. Now, remember what the Bible says about Lucifer. Iniquity was found in him. Found in him. Let's look at Judas. Mm -hmm. Follow me in your Bible quickly. Now in the book of St. Luke chapter 22. And we'll start reading at verse 1. All right. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. Yes. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him. You know, Judas already conspired right. with the people. That's right. <laughs> already made plans. He already had his plans in, 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 in motion, you know. Listen at this. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him. Yes. For they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. Now, when the devil come in a person, there's a transition. There's a change. That's right. If they used to walk with God, mm -hmm. and when that devil come in them, there's something about the Bible they will start to denounce. That's right. Their views about the Bible is going to start changing. They're going to start complaining. Church is too strict. 
tired of doing this, tired of rules. Yeah. Tired of got to go by rules and I'm tired of it. So what happened? They start hunting around behind the back of the righteous. That's right. Go visiting false churches or they start calling and communicating with the false church they came from. That's right. To see is their space still open. <laughs> Is my position still available? Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. You see, brothers and sisters, when you come to walk with God, you don't come with the attitude looking for position. You don't come seeking a title. The purpose of walking with God is for the salvation of self, not for title, not for position, but for self-salvation. Are you listening? That's right. The word of God says what? And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, the but they feared the people. Priests, scribe, how they will kill him because they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas. And the devil got into the apostle Judas. Surnamed Iscariot. Surnamed Iscariot. Being of the number of the twelve. Yes. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains. Let's look at Judas. Look at Jesus haven't even died yet. That's right. But Judas was already in the background conspiring. And he went his way. And communed. That's the way the Judases are in churches. That's right. We all come to church. I thank God. You know, God is the highest and God is the greatest. And they will even say. We bear witness. That's right. There is no God but one. We took sweet because counsel. Because the devil believed that too, you know. That's right. The Bible said if thou believe there is one God, you do well. The devils believe and tremble. And tremble. But the Judases of today is like the Judas of yesterday. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. So you will find as Judas conspired then against his Lord. Right. Against the brethren. That's right. Against his teacher. That's right. The Judases of the day do the same thing. They conspire against brothers and sisters and they would even conspire against their own teacher. That's right. Thy tongue deviseth mischief. Do you hear this? Now in the book of Psalms 52 and at verse 2. What is it? Thy tongue deviseth mischief. see, back then they didn't have telephone or internet, but they did communicate. Oh, yeah. Judas today, he's always on the phone or tweaking or emailing. That's right. He'll say, you know, I'm not going to be in first church long. You know, I'm, I'm on my way. I'm on my way out. Yeah. But then when the overseer come around, you know, that, that fellow Pastor Jennings, I met him too. <laughs> when he come around, he'll say good things about him. That's right. But when he's away, he'll throw off on him. That's right. Or Judas will communicate with his male or males or female or female friends. That's right. And trash the church and trash the ministers and trash leadership, but yet keep coming. That's right. Are right, you getting what I'm telling you? <laughs> he would call that brother or call that sister trying to debunk lessons of holiness and trying to debunk scriptural truths. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. The Bible says what in the book of Psalms? Now in the book of Psalms 49 and at verse 20. Thou Judas sittest. was a traitor. That's right. But yet he kept hanging around Jesus. That's terrible, isn't it? Oh yeah. It first started in heaven mm -hmm. and when it hit the earth it spread. Listen. In Psalms 49, at, at Psalms 50, and at verse 20. Come on, son. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. You sit and speak against your brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. 
You slander your own mother, son. Son. These things hast thou done. You done it? And I kept silence. And I was quiet. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself. Uh -huh. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. Do you hear that? That's right. Now consider this. Think about this, ye, New York. Ye that forget God. Ye what? <laughs> now consider this. Consider this, you that forget the Lord. Ye that forget God. What? Lest I tear you in pieces. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, one thing, I, I've been pastoring for 35 years. I've been preaching for about 43 to 44 years preaching. So I do have, you know, just a little bit of experience. Amen. In 35 years or over 40 years, I have witnessed numerous of Judas's. Mm. And one thing I learned, they all have in common. All of their actions are the same. Yeah. Not one Judas I met was different from the other. Right. For every time the Lord have moved on me to bring a message like this, Judas were always after the message or some days after or hours after he will reach out to his friends. That's right. And he going to call them or him or they. <laughs> what do you think about that message? Going to yeah. be one question. Or somebody must have been talking to Pastor Jennings. Yeah. Or somebody's in Pastor Jennings' ear because Judas is too dumb to realize you have the same character of the other Judases that were before you. That's right. Nobody got to run talk to me. Oh, no. Do someone got to tell you you have a cold when you know your nose is running? That's right. Judas is a coward. Oh, yeah. That's why Judas, one of the apostles, worked behind the scenes. He would not face Jesus like a man. No. He worked behind the scenes. That's the same way it's done among the wicked. That's Take right. this in heaven. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed? Satan worked among the angels. That's right. He didn't just jump in God's face. Oh, no. He worked among the angels, that's why a whole third, a whole third. Now ask yourself, you may say, well, man, how can people be so weak that somebody can come among us and trick them and manipulate them and pull them out the church? And we striving to live holy. Very good question. But consider this. Angels don't strive to live holy. Angels are holy. And if Satan can remove a third of angels who did not have to tarry for the Holy Ghost. Right. They was made holy from the day of their creation. Yeah. Satan tricked them. Conned them. And what was the subject? Oh, I'm going to be like the most high. For you to leave God and to side with the devil until you will have war. You have to believe what the devil is saying. That's right. For any brother to make you leave church and follow him yeah. who have no insight mm -hmm. and is not sent by the God of heaven at all. That's right. See, Judas will say, Pastor Jenner think he's the only one sent. No, I don't. Mm -hmm. That's the spirit of Aaron. And marry him. Because you know what they said about Moses? Have God spoken only by you? Has he not spoken by us? And the Bible says God heard it. And as a result of such, God came down the cloud and said, come out you three. Moses and Aaron and Miriam came before God. Come out to the tabernacle. I heard something. And as a result of such, God met Miriam with leprosy and she became white as snow and when Aaron saw it, he fell down. Amen. When you are in church for your soul and you know that it's the word of God that brought you here. That's right. 
Are you listening? You don't let your husband, your wife, your brother and sister, nor any local minister pull you out the church. The word of God says what? Still in the book of Psalms 50 and at verse 20. Uh -huh. Thou sinnest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Though thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. What else? Now consider this. Consider this. Ye that forget God. Ye that forget the Lord. Lest I tear you Have in Have you pieces. forgotten the Lord? Mm -hmm. Have you forgot how terrible God is? So I said, wait a minute, God is not terrible, he's good. He's called a terrible God. Terrible God. Right. Well, I thought he's good. He's good and terrible. and terrible. He's good to those that obey him. Right. But he's terrible to those that hate him. Right. This teaching, if you strive to live by it, you want to stay on the good side of God. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Stay on God's good side. Don't be a crowd follower. Are you listening? A lot of us, we get too close to people. And then get caught up in a sick, weak, frail church clique. That's why I tell the members in every low quick location, you better not get too close of no minister that we appoint. That's right. Not one. That's right. Don't get too close to Cole. Don't get too close to Harrison. Yeah. You better get close to God. Yeah. Well, why is that, Pastor Jennings? Imagine if one of them turned to Judas. I'm not saying they will, but I'm using a parable. Because Judas was an apostle, and they're not. That's right. And if the apostle turned, he was an apostle, handpicked by Jesus. Walk with him, talk with him, handle him, taught by him, and then turned on. So imagine if one of my brothers turned to Judas. And if you're too close, they're going to turn you. Yeah. And the very thing that got you out of falsehood, now you're going to denounce. That's right. Let me make it stricken harder than that. If I turn to a Judas and turn against God, use a fool to follow me. Follow you. That's right. Are you listening? That's why I am endeavored to stick with the book regardless to who like it or who don't like it. I'm not trying to make friends with nobody, but we're trying to save as many in our lifetime as we possibly can. You don't follow a person because they're your blood brother. You don't follow a person because they're your father, they're your son. Who do you think it was that the Lord overlooked from leading Israel? Moses' brother. Aaron was the one that made that calf. Wasn't it? That was Moses' blood. I don't care nothing about blood when it comes to that Bible. And because we take this stand, people say, he ain't loving, he, he's me. Oh, Pastor Jen is so hateful. <laughs> oh, what am I going to do? He's hateful. Well, oh, they get dramatic. Woe is me, woe is me. No, brother, hey, look, I love all of you. But we're living in a real, mean world, the Satan's domain. Ain't got time to be this sugar daddy, watered down preacher. 
It ain't nothing watered down about the devil. You want to water down, preacher? Go to Jake's. Go to Benny Hinn. Go to one of them. But here, we at war with the devil. Yeah? We at war with him. Oh, yeah, we at war with him. If the devil hate God, the devil is out to destroy every one of you. You got a choice. Either man up or let the devil walk all over you. I say like the Bible said, that me and my house shall serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Go and say God. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm telling you? But when they say, oh, he's arrogant. I don't pay none of that junk no mind. Seeing thou hatest instruction, the word of the Lord is truly with the truth of God. You can watch any of the preachers on television or internet. You don't find not one in the country getting the results like the truth of God is getting. None. They criticize it and say it's of the devil, but that don't mean nothing. Hundreds are coming, going down in the water and receiving the Holy Ghost. Go back to Judas, brother. Everybody all right? Back Listen. In Luke, back in Luke 22 and verse 2. Follow me. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, mm -hmm. for they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot being of the number of the twelve. Yeah. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains. Yes. How he might betray him mm -hmm. unto them. And they were glad. Wait a minute. He communed with some fellas. That's right. How he may betray Jesus. Unto them. Unto them. How did they feel about him? And they were glad. You one of us, Judas? That's right. You one of us, man. Yeah, hey, brother, how you doing? Greeting, greeting, brother. Yeah, you know what, man? You know, that pastor didn't make me sick. You too? <laughs> I thought it was just me, man. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I had internet people criticize the thousands of people around the world because over the internet, thousands thank God for us. They're not praising us. That's right. They're not worshiping us. That's right. They thank God for using us to pull them out of falsehood. That's right. So Judas hate. If you thank God for your brother, Pastor Janice, mm -hmm. Judas would say, oh, you talk about him more than you talk about God. How are you going to say that? You ain't around me every day. That's right. You give honor who honor is due. I don't care how boastful this sounds, but God, I have to say, like the apostles, God made choice among us That's right. and sent me to the world. Amen. Made me an apostle of the Lord and Savior Amen. and put his word in my mouth. To resurrect the heart of creation. Who is a God? I can't change that. No. I can't do nothing about that. All I can do is say like Jesus said, not my will, but let thy will be done. Judas conspired against Jesus, yeah. and the ones he talked to, they, they were, were glad. glad. They were glad. Oh, I don't want to be in that fellow's shoes for nothing. Mm. Listen. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains, how he might betray him unto them. Brothers and sisters that are here, so many standing out there can't get in. You that are watching, never let nobody suck you in a conversation of trashing the church. Yeah. 
Martin Luther King made an interesting statement. He said, a man can't rise your back unless it's bent. He said, but if you straighten up, <laughs> then that man will fall off of it. That's right. Have you noticed Judas, and I want you to evaluate your own experience. Have you noticed people that are like this, they don't go to everybody in church. It's certain ones they go to the church. Only the ones that are tolerate them. Only the ones that will listen to them. That's right. They know who won't tolerate their folly. That's right. They don't go to the one that will tell them, get out my face. Right. Don't even bring that stuff to me. Get out my face. That's right. they, they, don't, they won't go to them. They go to the ones that's weak like them, cowardly like them. If first church is so wrong, you that's backstabbing the church. Then get off the choir. That's right. That's right. Get off the instruments. Get out the pulpit. Make your exodus out of Egypt. Amen. It won't change. The word of God is here. It's here. We are for God. And we don't have the time. We have hundreds of ministers, hundreds, and they just keep growing. And I refuse to get too close to any of them. Amen. None of the ministers been around me longer than my brother Deke and Williams. Amen. Williams and us grew up together. Amen. Williams was an ex-con. I mean, when was an ex-con? Wow. Pastor, y'all didn't know that. Anytime you believe in three gods, you's a criminal. You's a criminal when you believe in three gods. He was an ex-con. He's born again now. Amen. I had. You know, and me and Williams is close. Oh, yeah. But even he'll tell you, there's a certain space That's right. between him and I and close at the same time. That's right. There's people over the internet now because when they see me talk like this about William, someone said, why don't you stop picking with William? They don't know the camaraderie that me and Williams had. That's right. That's right. So me and Williams can spar each other all the time. All the time. They don't see what Williams be doing in our travel. <laughs> see? Am I right, Huey? Am I right, Shay? Am I right, L? You know, so I, when sometimes I, you know, spar with Williams up here. But when we in other cities and we in the car after service, Amen. we don't get to shake that finger in my face. <laughs> all right, all right, explain this scripture. Then he said, oh boy, I got you now, Jennings. <laughs> I got you now. Well, we have that camaraderie. That's right. Which should be. And at the same time, he come at me like that is still respectable. Oh, yeah. In other words, I am not the type of overseer that look at himself as a king. God right. is our king. That's and right. we are servants of this king. Right. Here we leave thousands, but I come down. I, I love to sit and rap to all the brothers. Yes, you do. And most time when I talk to you, I ain't talking to you from Pastor Jennings. The brothers that have been around me a long time know this. Oh, most yeah. time when I talk to brothers, it's not Pastor Jennings. Most time they're like, hey, PJ, what's up? I'm like, what's that? Yeah. What's up? That's right. You cannot lead people unless you understand the language of the people. And that's why God don't make it. So, well, some folks say, I'm a preacher. A man can be a preacher. That don't mean he's a leader. Yeah. A leader is a whole different category. Oh, yeah. Do you understand? Oh, yeah. Listen at Judas. Follow me in the Bible. Still in Luke 22, now in verse 4. All right. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains. Are you communing hmm. behind the back of the church? 
and behind the back of the pulpit of your treason? Are anyone in New York being sucked into conversations of church slander? Mm. If you are, back away from that person. That's right. Get away from them. That's right. And I don't care who they are. Are you listening? Amen. Listen. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains. And what? How he might betray him unto them. Yes. And they were glad. They were glad. And covenant to give him money. Wait, 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 wait. Hmm. That's another side of Judas. That's right. Judas will use you for a buck. Judas loves money. Judas will use you for money. Then if you don't give it to Judas, Judas will lay you out. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Listen closely. And they were glad and covenant to give him money. I remember of a former Judas that backslid and made himself a preacher. Actually gave, sent a check of $500 to Williams. Yeah. <laughs> didn't he sue? Amen. A lot of folk didn't know about it because we, we didn't advertise it. No. But Williams came to me. He said, William said, do you believe this guy? <laughs> this guy going to send me $500. Yeah. See, when a person going to try to send you money to come with them, they let you know you're worthless. That's right. Because you cannot think of me of any worth. You actually think I can be bought oh, like amen. a hoe? Amen. Talk back to me. Amen. The book says you're bought with the price. Who is the one that buy us? Jesus. How? Through death. Anytime somebody can offer you money to side with them, you are hard. Yeah. I don't care if you're in this pulpit. You are a how? That's right. If you're a man or a woman and somebody can offer you money to make you turn against God or leave God or turn against the church, you are no good, good for nothing, worth this twofold child of hell. How? Amen. I've been offered millions of dollars to denounce the faith. I've been offered millions of dollars, mansions, Bentleys, Ferraris, Rolls Royce. I've been offered all of it. And I'm always insulted. I've been offered other preachers' organizations. The bishops have met with me, offered me their entire organizations with a string attached. If I will compromise, I told them, no. You going to offer me a movement? God made us a builder. I don't need your church. Man, either you save or you're not. Or you're not. A man who don't have nothing to die for is because he ain't got nothing to live for. We are die for God. Because we are determined to live for him. Preachers have offered me churches, their organizations. If I would change up and justify a divorce, if I would stop teaching there's one God, if I would stop teaching Jesus Christ as God, women preachers have offered me their organizations. If I would ordain other women, if I would tell the women, you know, it's all right that, you know, not to have your dresses so long. Mm. If I would justify looking like Jezebel. Mm. The very thought of act offering me this stuff. Someone said, did you second thought? No. No. Why? What can you offer me that's compared to what God offered us? <laughs> now think of it. The Lord offered me living forever. And ever. and ever. Thank you. Not living alone, but with him and the saints of old and the saints of now and the saints of the future. To walk with Abraham. Hallelujah. To walk with Joshua. 
and to walk with the prophets and the former apostles of old. Yeah. And then somebody just offer you a million dollars, a yacht, prioritize. Get your priorities in order. Understand this. God is more valuable than a wife, than a husband, than money, than a mansion, than a yacht. God is first. Hallelujah. God, I said. Jesus taught us, what will a man give in exchange? Brothers and sisters, are you changing your soul for someone or for something? Amen. Amen. Are you swapping your soul? Are you selling your dignity? Go ahead. Are you allowing someone manipulate your self-respect? Do you find yourself now, after dealing with him or her or them, questioning, questioning your loyalty to God? Amen. You didn't do that before you met him. You didn't do that before you met her. You didn't do that before you went there. You had the Holy Ghost 30 and 40 and 50 years, and you're going to let some worthless piece of trash take it overnight? That's right. Talk back to me. And you done carried for years, sweating and turning your plate down, fasting to get the attention of the Most High. When you finally got God attention and you came through speaking in tongues, Satan is waiting in reserve to challenge that Holy Ghost you have. Sometimes we get so angry with the word, we lose sight on the fact it's God's word. And the devil makes you bitter with the one that preached the word. And this is where the devil trick you. As if I wrote, the man, you know how many people are upset with me? I done got so many death threats, and even by Masons. I got death threats by Masons. I got death threats by the Ku Klux Klan. I got threats from some Hebrew Israelites. I have to say some because all Hebrew Israelites, some of them are very respectful. I have talked to some, very respectful. In fact, there's some on the internet that promote others to watch our program. But my large, you know what's so crazy if I use that term? My largest confrontation don't come from sinners. It comes from them that claim they're some Christians. <laughs> Preachers who claim they love Jesus. Yeah. Had a bishop called me and laid me out because I preach about women looking like prostitutes. My Lord, my Lord. He said, you don't have no Bible in the New Testament where the Bible called women whores. He said, I know that's in the Old Testament, but you don't have that in the New Testament. I said, you sure about that? He said, yes, Mr. Preacher. <laughs> I asked him, did God inspire the word? He said, yes. I said, God said he's the same yesterday and today. I said yesterday, did he call them whores? He said yes, I said that's what I call them today. <laughs> I don't hate women. No. I'm married to a beautiful woman. I was born of a beautiful woman. We had beautiful sisters in the church. That's right. But my sisters that are sinners, you ain't got to walk out here like the way you are. Stop trying to look like Beyonce and all these other artificial lip-wearing women. You want to buy lips, buy hips, buy breasts, buying all this silicone. That's why it don't take you long to deteriorate when you die. It ain't nothing real about you. By the time they put you in the ground, your whole face collapsed. It's not even your face. Silicon and deflated. One breast up here, one breast down here. We teach our sisters love the way God made you. Love yourself. Stop trying to 
stop allowing your children to be manipulated by social media. How in the world you expect for boys to stop humming around your daughter's hips and she's only 10 and you got her out here with something about as short as this handkerchief. You tell her, keep them boys away from you. Look at what they're coming around. So I don't blame the women that don't know no better. That's why we got to teach. That's right. So church people say, you see that? They in a cult. <laughs> women on one side, men on the other. <laughs> Jews do it. Yeah. Muslims do it. There's a whole lot of religions do it. That's right. I mean, if a husband and wife want to sit together, go ahead. But if a man is miserable because his wife is sitting away on the other side for about three hours, and he like, ah. And she focusing on the word. Ooh, praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. And he, uh, man up. Stop acting like you so weak. You wasn't born with her. And you ain't going to die with her. The Bible said, nigga, you came in the world. And nigga, you shall return. You stick around this message to make a man out of you. Oh, yeah. And to make a woman out of you. Many of you women feel as though if you put on this stuff, you look sexy. <laughs> That's right. Look how low you put yourself. Why everything you do, you got to associate your behavior with sex. Right. That's right. Well, Pastor Jennings, sex is love. Roaches don't love one another. <laughs> but they keep multiplying. You don't believe me? Turn your lights on in the morning. When you turn the lights on, the roaches, <laughs> they're running. Since when do sexiest lipstick, sexiest fake eyelashes, sexiest fake man. hips, sexiest laboratory hair, sexiest laboratory nails, sex what? What? What about your mind? What about self-intelligence? Go ahead. What about self-respect? What about self-decency? What about fearing God? Hallelujah. If all you can offer is a good feeling, that ain't nothing. Let me get raw. A man can get that from two pieces of liver. <laughs> My Lord. See, men that have prison background know what I'm talking. <laughs> so anytime you think that your sexiness or your beauty is based upon bad performance, mm. Suppose you have a stroke and you can't perform no more. Then what? Brother, you love her because she got on all this fake stuff. Suppose she's so ill she can't wear it. Then when he changed towards you, sister, that lets you know it wasn't the real you he loved. It was that junk you had on. Am I right, I said? We want the world to make God the center of attraction. Yeah. That's right. It is written, beautify the meek for salvation. You want to be beautiful? Yeah. Repent of your sins. Yeah. There ain't nothing so beautiful you shaking your behind in the clubs of New York. A dress no longer than my jacket. You and your daughter is there. Yeah. With some young fella in the middle, and you old enough to be his mama. That's right. And you sweating, and your reasonable vaccinity thereof of curls done fell all out. Eyes all bucked, bucked. lips all puckered, looking at him. <laughs> he in the middle? Like ham. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and the mother is the thick piece of bread and the daughter is the heel part of the bread. And yet you call that beautiful. What's so beautiful, brother and sister? You out here drunk, smoking, gambling, living like a fool. What's so beautiful about you, brother? You getting gray hairs in your beard and in your mustache and in your hair and you want to paint it black looking like a fool. The texture of your skin don't even go with the blackness of your face. (laughs) Here you got crow's feet round your eyes and your beard is midnight black, you old fool. That's a fool. That's a fool. Talk back to me. And sometimes the fellas, when they get their beard all silver, they want to make it artwork. So they dye the left side and the right side of the cheek real black. Keep the mustache silver and keep the chin silver and got all hair black. Right. You know, like they Huck Hogan. That's right. What's the matter with you? How did you get this demented? And how did you get so mentally weak that television manipulate how you look? That's right. And television make the human family look sleazier and sleazier and sleazier. It's a disgrace. You men want to fight other men because they look at your wife. And your wife breasts all showing her behind hanging out. The tattoo on her butt is seen. That's right. You want to fight some man? No. You need to argue with your wife for coming out being an undressed turkey. Amen. That's what you need to do. Amen. Are you listening? Well, Pastor Dennis, I do this for attention. What you going to do when you start aging and your body start changing? When gravity calls on you to come home. Brother, they used to have those abs. Huh? He go from abs to absent. <laughs> huh? Stomach used to be flat, you know. He would wear the body shirt and jeans, stunning flat. Now, he started to look like a lowercase s. Back started going up. Stomach started coming down. They're like a lowercase s. Right. Wife see him? I know what alphabet you is. <laughs> huh? See, if you love yourself and love God first, if you love God first, he will bring you into the true knowledge of self. Because the true knowledge of self is to know why you're made. The Lord says, I created you for what? Mind glory. So to exist, but then don't know why you exist, is living in sheer stupidity. That's right. Pastor Dennis, I'm here to get rich. God, I'll make you for that. If God wants you to get rich, he'll make you rich. In that Bible, oh yes. It was the Lord that made Solomon rich and Solomon didn't ask. Solomon asked for wisdom to lead God's people. But God stepped up and made Solomon rich. God will not make everybody rich. And the reason why he won't do it because he don't want to send everybody to hell. Some people is arrogant with $50. Some want you to call them sir because of the car they drive. That's right. Nothing materialistic you should get to change you. Before then, everybody knew you in the hood as Bubba or Shorty or Slim. You know, the moment Bubba... (laughs) Go got a Mercedes, he get out the car different. Bubba. Get a Jag, get a Ferrari, he step out different. He's, now he, when he get out, he... <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter with you, Bubba? <laughs> Do you understand? As God's people, we're not here to compete for nothing. Why do God want us to focus on him? Because he's alpha and omega. He is the ending of all things. So that means this. 
once you lose everything in life, including your own life, the only one that's going to be the last stop is God. That's it. So no one should get so involved with anyone or anything until you say, that's my world. Yeah. That's my life. No, God has to be your world. That's right. God has to be your life. To serve God with any other mentality is failure. Oh, yeah. You will not succeed in serving God in the manner that he requires because you're scared to lose him. You're scared to lose her, especially when him or her threaten you to choose between them or God. That's right. You know, the mistake that we have made, we love that man and love that woman with all our heart. God ain't never told you to love no one like that but him. Amen. You love from the heart, but you don't love no flesh with all your heart because that empowers flesh to manipulate you in a direction you never thought you would go. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Husband may want to, no, you know what, no, I know he's telling the truth, but girl, I ain't doing that now. You know, I ain't doing that. Well, look, look, Billy, your, your wife is still living. Look, girl, I don't want to talk about that. No, we got to talk about it because I want to be saved. Wait a minute. You, you listen to that Cat Jennings too? Well, you don't want to introduce me to him. Yeah, but I didn't think you would be that interested. Well, your wife is still living. She's in Brooklyn. Mm. Yeah, well, I, 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 know, I know she's in Brooklyn. Well, I've never been married before. So according to the Bible, I'm living in fornication because I've never been married before, but you living in adultery because your wife is in Brooklyn. Well, God going to fix it. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what you want God to do? Because he already fixed it by telling me I'm a fornicator and telling you you are an adulterer. So he fixed it by left it on the record for us. Yeah. And you the one told me Pastor Jennings preaches truth, and you ain't never met no preacher like him. But now you, but, but now, go ahead, man. <laughs> yeah, I know what I said. I know what I said. But wait a minute. But you, you look, look. They turn that nigger off. That's what they say, don't they? Yes. Because now, what are you challenging, sister? His bed. Yes. Some men that go to hell before they give up that bed. That's right. I had men tell me, Pastor Jim, I'm going to go to hell Look, before I give up that bed. I told them, you're right. <laughs> you're, right. you're right. No hips, no thighs, no male anatomy shall have more power over you than your Lord. That's right. I'm not saying you won't get weak. I'm not saying you won't have no failure. But if I fall, I'm getting back up. But when you have total power over me, that means I have chose you instead of God. And when you threaten my salvation, well, look, girl, look, you have to choose between this, this church thing and me. Think of it, sister. Look at what this cat said. Choose between church and him. Ask him, well, did you give me life? Can you promise me eternal life? Can you guide me to the Lord? Do you know God well enough to even talk to him? Well, he may say, well, the Bible says if you want to know anything, ask your husband at a home. Well, that's right, but I ain't got none. Because <laughs> you ain't it. Amen. Amen. You keep talking like that. You're going to make us argue when we go back. I know. <laughs> huh? That's what JJ used to say. I know. <laughs> I want you to fight it out. Fight it you out. know why? Your soul is worth fighting for. Yeah. You choose. Let me, let, me, let me make it raw. Let me make it raw. Let me make it raw. Make it, make it raw. You choose between his draws and eternal life with God. You choose between her panties and bra or eternal life with God. The chips is on the table. You choose. Many of you don't like to hear it that way, but that's the bottom line. Amen. 
Oh, you can say it in a nicer way than that. I'm going to call a spade a spade. Yeah. And you that are watching don't like it, turn it off. That's right. Huh? That's right. Let's go back to the book of Luke. Real quick, my time is gone. Back in Luke 22, it's still at verse 4. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains. Yeah. How he might betray him unto them. Yes. And they were glad and covenant to give him money. Uh -huh. And he promised. He promised. And sought opportunity to betray him. Judas is an opportunist. He's an opportunist. Sometime a person get close to you in church, not because they're your brother or sister, because they want to use you. Or the way they really feel about church, God, church, leadership, brothers or sisters. They want to, you know, old folks say misery love company. That's the truth. Because a lot of people who are miserable, they want to communicate that misery to others. So they're very selective. Amen. Judge yourself and see, are you Mr. or Mrs. Judah? Mm -hmm. Judas, should I say. All right. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him yes. unto them in the absence of the multitude. Then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. Yeah. Now down in St. Luke chapter 22 and at verse 20. Read fast. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, now, which is shed Judas for you. participating in the Lord's Supper. Judas will hang around church for years. That's right. Many years. And sometimes we say, wow, that brother is real spiritual. How do you know? Some folks say, I know that brother, I know that sister. The truth of the matter is this. You can't know anyone until you know their heart. That's right. Because you want to know what part of a person that never lie? The heart. The heart. The heart no, I don't care what image they project outwardly. The heart tells the truth about everyone all the time. Amen. Someone said, well, you can't know nobody's heart. That's where you're wrong. Yes. The Bible said the heart is desperately wicked. The heart of deceitful and desperate is desperately wicked. So yes, you can know somebody's heart only if God show you their heart. Is that Bible? In the fifth chapter of the book of Acts of the Apostles, there was Ananias and Sapphire, husband and wife, who conspired to keep back part of the price, to keep back some money because of land that they sold. And Peter, by the Holy Ghost, knew their heart and said, why have you lied? And then he said, why have Satan filled your heart? heart. Satan filled their heart. And then Ananias dropped dead. After Ananias dropped dead in front of the apostle Peter, his wife came in and his wife had no clue that her husband died. Peter, by the Holy Ghost, saw her heart and said before she started talking, why have you lied? Why have you come to tell the same lie? The same, then he prophesied, the ones that carry your husband out is waiting to carry you out. She dropped dead. Peter said, you did not lie unto men, but you have lied unto God. Do we understand this? Be careful how you treat one another. Jesus said, what you do to my least ones, you do unto me. Right. You backstab that brother, keep backstabbing that sister, keep backstabbing your overseer. Keep that. You backstabbing Jesus. That's right. You got a beef, man up or woman up, go talk to them. Right. If it come down to doctrine and principle, come talk to your brother. That's right. Because what we preach, we wrap around with scripture, That's airtight. Right. airtight. Yeah. That's why we don't mind the world challenging it. Right. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? What God people eat in New York is supposed to be the same thing they eat in California, Florida, Philadelphia, Jamaica, Africa, Dubai, India, all these places. They got to eat the same thing. I'm a food inspector. Go ahead. Huh? Go ahead. Oh, yes. I, I, I'm a food inspector. I got to make sure that bread is Jesus' bread. <laughs> That's right. For he said, I'm that bread from heaven. That's right. I got to make sure that meat is Jesus', meat. Jesus meat. For the Bible said, meat for the belly and belly for the meat. That's I right. got to make sure that milk is Jesus' milk. For the Bible said, a newborn babe desire to sin, said milk of the world that you may grow thereby. That's right. I'm looking at the menu. Oh, yeah. There ain't no flies on this menu either. No, no. Someone said, well, I just pick out the bones and I eat the meat. There ain't no bones in this. No bones. It's all meat. That's right. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? 
What did he say? In Luke 22, now at verse 20. What is it? Likewise, also the cup after supper. Yes. Saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Yes. But behold. Behold. The hand of him that betrayeth me is with me at the table. Thou preparest a table in the presence of my enemies. Of my enemies. Jesus said, but behold, look, the hand of him that betrayed me, of him that betrayed me, is with me, is with me, on the table. Brothers, ministers and all, I mean, if you're on a phone dogging Pastor Jennings, he was a traitor. That's a traitor. And it no, and ain't no one in Pastor Jennings' ear. No, is no one talking to Pastor Jennings. No, is no one talking to Pastor Jennings. This message about Judas hit me when I was in Detroit mm. at settlement. Wow. Not to preach in Detroit. Wow. To preach here. Mm. Huh? Oh. This was brought to me in Detroit. Wow. Not to preach in Detroit. Mm. To preach here. And God don't lie. That's right. mm. You want to leave first church? Okay. Wow. I ain't going to be where I want to be. That's right. No, man. God have done too much for me to desert him. We had one brother here, Brother Veda. And he was a minister from another church. And I wasn't going to put him up in the pulpit quick. When you just come in here, I don't throw you in the pulpit. I don't care what church you came from. Now, I'm, not, I'm different from other preachers. A lot of preachers, you go in, they just dump you in the pulpit. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh-uh. No, no, no. He would call me, Pastor Jennings, Pastor Jennings, I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. I said, okay. Hmm. I'm not. People who, be, people who knew me a long time know this is not a way I just start. A man who's anxious to get up here will make a mess regardless of who he is when he get up here. That's old school. Yeah. Old school bishops ain't throw you in no pulpit. No. Oh, no. They watch you. They observe you. Yes. Pastor Jen, how can you observe someone you in another state? <laughs> Boy, do you got a lot to learn. A lot to learn. <laughs> Wasn't for long, Veda called me, Pastor Jennings. Well, I'm, you know, I'm going to another church. I said, I know. <laughs> he said, I ain't got nothing against what you preach. I said, oh, oh, I know. He said, but, I said, tell me, why are you going? I said, because you're supposed to be here for the word, according to you. You told me that you ain't never heard the one preach like us, and we, you give me a better understanding of the Bible. You know, folks talk that. He said, well, the saints in New York don't wish up and praise God enough for me. I said, you ain't come to church for singing. You come to church for the word. You can, look, New York can sing until they turn the colors of the carpet. If they don't get the word in them, New York is going to hell. That's right. Singing don't save you. No. The word is what saves you. I told Vegas the same thing. I said, the folks in New York, and ain't none of them come to first church because they heard me sing. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Oh. Ain't none of y'all because my, my, my daughter, Sierra, she always teased me. She said, when, when, if the telecast is on and they watch it, she has, sometimes she'll have a computer just look at me, just stand and look. I'm like, what's wrong with you? She said, you can't sing. <laughs> I said, I can sing. There's no, and she said, look, you don't sing it. You preach it saying. <laughs> she said, because when you don't know the words, you just fill in blanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's right. <laughs> She's right. I fill in the blank. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I, I, I grunt my way Run through. <laughs> but it's the word. What is God showing the people? Saying it is common in the earth. But the word is uncommon in the earth. Yeah. So everyone that comes here, that they heard the message. And they was more in tune to the message than the opening song, than a choir, 
than a band. Where in all the other churches, they're more focused on the choirs they got. No, no, no. no. We want the word of God to be the focus of church. When that happens, you're going back now to the way it was when the apostles was here. The focus for them was the word. You don't read where the, when the apostles were around, they was having testimony service and someone <laughs> saying, God's not dead. He, huh? Or someone saying, preaching of the gospel. No, 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 no. Oh, no. They wasn't doing on that. Working on me, Lord, keep working on me. Never nobody was doing that. Oh, you know what they did? They kept preaching and was working on the people. Right. Singing is part of it. But the greatest part and the most important important part of worship, don't you ever forget it, is not singing, is not fasting, is not praying. It's the preaching of God's word. Because without the word, you don't know how to fast. You don't know how to pray. And you don't know how to sing because you can sing a lie quick as you can tell one. The word challenged the lyrics of your song. Are you listening? Be quick. But behold the hand of him. That betrayed that me betrayed is with me on the table. Is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goeth as it was de as it was determined. Yeah. But woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. Uh -huh. And they began to inquire among themselves which of them it was that should do this thing. That's what's in the mind of some folks here. I wonder who's in New York backstabbing Pastor Jen. Yeah. I wonder who's in New York dogging the people in the church. Ooh. Sure. I'm there. Ooh, child. Mm. Someone's in there nudging each other in the chair. Oh, I told you. <laughs> Make sure it ain't you. That's right. The word will take care of anybody else. That's right. The word will take care of Judas. Yeah. In fact, Judas will take care of himself. Mm -hmm. Read. Keep it up now. Come on, read quick. Now in St. Luke 22, down at verse 45. Let's see what happened. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. Yeah. And said unto them, why sleep ye? Why y'all sleep? Rise and pray. Get up and pray. Lest ye enter into temptation. Yeah. And while he yet spake. While he yet spake. Behold, a multitude and he that was called Judas. And he that was called Judas. One of the twelve. One of the twelve. Went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. Hold it right there. That's a point that I want to elaborate on briefly. Kissing Jesus was a sign so all the ones who were going to capture him know he's the one. That's right. Kissing is a sign of affection, correct? Yeah. Here you had the image of affection, but a different agenda behind the image. That's right. So the appearance of affection is not always affection. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Yeah. Here you had somebody say, oh man, he kissed Jesus. He must love him. Oh man, he embraced him. He must love him. Man, he, they sit and talk to him. He must love him. And that's not always the case. No. Never let your enemy know what you're thinking and never be quick to let your enemy know that you know that's your enemy. Are you listening? Wisdom is this. Make your enemy comfortable. Because when your enemy is comfortable, they are more careless and manifest quicker what they do. 
if your enemy have knowledge that you know him or know her, they will always keep a facade. Never show you the real self. But when your enemy is comfortable, man, a lot of time comfort bring on carelessness. And they will truly manifest how they think, how they feel. You got to be a poor, a full-pledged child of hell of the devil. If you would just call brothers, I don't care if it's one brother or several, or one sister or several, and you just going to dog first church of the Lord Jesus Christ, the church you claim you're in, or dog Pastor Jennings who you claim as your overseer. I'm not your overseer. You just hanging around the church like a fly on the wall. We will squat you with the Bible. Yes. <laughs> That's right. All right, listen. That's right. Do you see why folk hate Pastor Jim? <laughs> I got to mix it up with the book. I got to do it. Again, I'm not one of these Benny Hens. I'm a, why brothers and sisters respect me like they do? I'm a realist. I'm just real with you. You know, and brothers and sisters who come from the hood, I mean real hood, who had a real tough sinful life, even they know they cannot sustain following some sugar preacher. That pre it, the word got to hold you. Yeah. When you know the life you lived in the past, yeah. you can't afford to be under no weak preacher. Yeah. You got to have someone who's going to jump on you. Mm. Yeah. I mean, when you know that thing out there pulling on you, you got to have someone that's going to jump on you with the book. What the, what the Bible said? What, what the Bible? What the Bible said? You got to. Got to. You out there sinning and preaching just, oh, you're a bad boy. You, he's a devil. You're not nice. You're going to be like, how many here came from the hood? Raise your hand. How many here know that the devil's riding your back? Raise your hand. So don't you know it takes a strong message to fight that devil that you're dealing with? It takes a strong message. So to all brothers and sisters that say Pastor Jennings don't have no love and he's arrogant and all that stuff, I'm not your problem. Your problem is that you are so weak. That's right. And I've become so spoiled by digesting the sugar from these worthless bums called preachers. You take a child who's always eating candy and then go to grandmom and grandpa's house where they give you collard greens, turnip greens, <laughs> kale and chicken and sweet potatoes and bok choy and candy and you know the way you were when you was little, eat them greens. Even the baby out the baby jar, you give it. See, mother, tr it's tricky. Mothers know when you got that green peas and that's all nasty. You give it by itself, the child be like, looking at you like, why you do that to me? <laughs> so the mothers get slick. You take the, the the baby food of green peas and you mix it with some applesauce. <laughs> see, and that way the child is digesting it. But see, I ain't doing that. That's I'm right. just giving you straight up green peas. Straight up. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Listen, I'm just going straight with the peas. <laughs> and I know some of y'all frown, be like, oh God, did you hear what he said? Sometimes the women be like, oh Lord, help him, help him, Lord, help him. You know? My job, I'm determined to save your soul from hell. That's something I'm determined to do. Satan is fighting God's people everywhere. And many of God's people's given up backsliding. Everyone who's trying to live godly have it hard some area. Oh yeah. Certainly you do. Oh yeah. If the word of God hit you, don't think I'm picking on you because don't look at me. It's the book. That's right. My job is to preach it. Your job is to strive to obey it. And if you're struggling with something, just come on back and ask God to help you to come up to it. Amen. The brothers who got the earring in the air, 
Some brothers say, look, Pastor Gene, I know you're preaching the truth. You preach against that earring, man, so I'm going to wait and get my earring out before I come. You may die. You can never get yourself straight staying out there. You got to get yourself straight by coming in here. That's right. There's nothing, there's nothing that would challenge your manhood like the Bible. Amen. Man, the Bible challenged your manhood in ways you never dreamed of. There will nothing challenge your womanhood like the Bible. Right. Finish up on Judas so I can knock off. And while he yet wins. spake, behold, a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve went before him yeah. and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. Kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, Judas, betrayest thou the son of man? Wait, wait, I told you, he knew it. knew it. It's not Judas. Jesus knew it. Oh, yeah. Judas, betrayest thou the son of man? I've had brothers come to me. Pastor Jennings, I mean, do you think I'm Judas? A lot of time I don't say yeah nay. I just say like Jesus said, thou sayest. Thou sayest. <laughs> now that makes something like, wait, 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 come on, Pastor Jennings, come on, don't ask me like that. I mean, yes or no? Thou sayest. Thou sayest. And I leave it just like that. Thou sayest. <laughs> Come on, Williams. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, Judas, betrayest thou the son of man with a kiss? Are you a traitor? Mm. You going to kiss me then split? You going to leave? Leave. Listen. When they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? Wait a minute. Hmm. Hey, Lord. Shall we start killing? Killing. <laughs> hey, Lord. They, he... he one of us betrayed you? Yeah. What do you want us to do, Lord? <laughs> what make one react like that? Love do it. Love. Do you see what I'm telling you? Listen. And one of them smoked the servant of the high priest. Yes. And cut off his right ear. Mm. These were the apostles. <laughs> That's right. I let you the know, apostles. not even they in the spirit all the time. That's right. Yeah, that, these were the apostles, man. Oh, yeah. It was the disciples. They was ready, what we would say in our language, they was ready to rumble. <laughs> they was ready to mix it up. That's right. You're going to kiss Jesus? Mm. And then some folks going to get ready to move on Jesus? Mm. Hey, wait, wait, hey, hey, wait. They, they're getting too close to our t shirt. Hey, wait, hey, hey, y'all packing? Anybody packing? <laughs> y'all right. got some swords around here? That's right. That's right. It shows right. you the not, I don't care how much Holy Ghost you got, there's a natural side of you. Right. Is that the truth? Amen. This is what I mean by being brutally honest. When you get these overzealous so-called Christian folk, well, child, the Lord saved me, I, uh, you know, I got the Holy Ghost, and I don't even know how to cuss no more. You a liar. A lie. You do know how. <laughs> you may not do it, but you know how. Yeah. And all right, I said. You know how to cuss, don't you, William? Yes. Don't you know how? I know how to cuss. <laughs> Amen. You know how to cuss, Pastor Jenny? Sure, I know how to cuss. <laughs> Just can't do it. Can't do it. The sinner challenges the God in you. Yeah. Sure he does. Oh, yeah. You're challenged on the job. You're challenged in the street. That's why I keep telling people, don't say what you never will do. How can you say that without experience? Right. You got to get some experience under your belt first, which qualify you to talk. That's right. Brothers be like, oh, Pastor Jenny, you know, I thank God for this way. You know, it took the fight out of my hands. Okay. <laughs> Pastor Jenny's man, a woman slapped me. I, did, I, did, I ain't fight back. Okay. okay. God bless you that time. That's right. <laughs> Suppose a man roll on you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What you going to do? Mm. Suppose, you know, one of your brothers is out. We walking. What's your name, brother? Brian. Brother Brian and Jose. brother Jose, brother Randy, yeah. brother Gary. All right. Brian, Jose, Randy, Gary, all of us walking, walking down the street. I'm walking with him on our way to one of the pizza places here in New York. You know, I'm walking with all four. Then somebody jump on me. You that Pastor Jenner? Well, yeah, I'm Pastor Jenner. Now. What are all four of them going to do? Just stand over me? Oh, man, Pastor Jenner's going through it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Randy L. Suffer with them that suffer. <laughs> Jack, you better get these men off me. <laughs> Do you understand? Yeah. It's like churches being held up today. I'm telling you straight, you ain't coming in first church. No. And holding us up and you get out. All these churches we trying to build and you going to take our money? So I said, Pastor Jenny, you going to pray for him? I am. Because he going to need it. I'm, I'm just being straight up. I'm not a hypocrite. You ain't coming in here Tomorrow you're going to hold the church up. No way. It's time to lock the doors. I'm going to tell the brother, lock the doors. Lock them. You have to choose. Between that money and Jesus. The reason why you find a lot of folk going to these churches and doing this, because they look at church people as this passive softies. I've had churches criticize us because we got a security team. Mm -hmm. I'm not the one formed the security team. Most people don't even know how it happened. Years ago on Frankfurt Avenue, our old headquarters, I was doing a radio broadcast live. And there was a backsliding sister sitting to my right. And, you know, you can tell she'd been out there because she still had these needles her marks all in the arm. Her mother and her brother went to the church. So while I'm over the air, she started yelling out, oh, that junk you preaching. And I'm like, sister, are we over the air now? I said, sister, please don't interrupt the service. So then she stopped and started laughing. Blood out of it again. Shut the so-and-so up, Pastor Jennings. I'm in a poem fit. I'm like, sister. If, if you don't be quiet, we're going to have the ushers usher you out. <laughs> and I started by teaching again. She yelled again, F you. I said, all right. Now, we, we're over the air. So her brother used to be one of the keyboard players. He got off the keyboard and went to get his sister. Her mother came. The sister start fighting her brother and start swinging on him uh, 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 and pushed him off and he lost his balance. At the time, I had only six kids. My youngest daughter, Persia, was the baby sitting on my wife's lap. Mm -hmm. The woman jumped, ran out the aisle, and besides running out the door, she attacked my wife. Mm -hmm. If she would have had a knife, my wife would have got stabbed easy about seven or eight or nine times. Yeah. My wife went down to protect our youngest daughter. She held her head down. And then they went to get the woman off my wife, but then my daughter fell on the floor. Yeah. Now, I'm in a pool pit all the time. All I remember is seeing my wife like someone run track. <laughs> Because now her baby hit the floor. Right. Right then she forgot she was Sister Jenkins. <laughs> hey man, I'm telling you. Right then she forgot she was Pastor Jenkins' wife. <laughs> All I remember was seeing her back. <laughs> and the back part of pews is high. Yeah. She went over them pews like someone running hurdles. Girl. She was gone after that one that attacked her. And when she went after, I think it was Huey. Huey scooped my wife up, like took her off the floor. Her legs was in midair. <laughs> Never say what you won't do. That's right. Until you get some experience. Right. Are you listening? Yeah. Now, that's reality preaching. Right. We ain't trying to snowball you. We ain't trying to duke you. Walking with God is tough, yes, but life is going to challenge your walk. Yeah. Devil don't care nothing about you in the truth. And you don't care nothing about you speaking in tongue. No. You can be speaking in tongue in one hour. In the next hour, if you're not careful, you will be cussing. That's right. Experience 
Old folks say is the best teacher. Get some experience. Don't claim deliverance until you have experience. Don't say God delivered you from something and your mind and heart is still in it. True deliverance from a, let me make an example. True deliverance from a club is not because you don't go there physically. True deliverance from a club is not when you just physically not there, but your mind is not there and your heart is not there. Because when your heart is not there, the, the, tr- the, the club is not even attracted to you no more. When your mind is not there, you don't have no thoughts of wishing that you was there. That's true deliverance. That's right. Do you understand? Right. Let's read Judas in. And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. Yeah. And Jesus answered and said, suffer ye the Suffer ye thus far. Come on, son. And he touched his ear and healed him. Give me Judas in. I want to see how the rascal ended. Now in the book of Acts chapter 1, we're at verse 15. What is it? And in those days, Peter stood in the midst of the disciples and said the number of names together were about 120. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before them. Yes. Concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. Uh For he was numbered with us and had... Obtain part of this ministry. Look at Peter reflecting on Judas who once was. Uh Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity. And falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst. And all his bowels gushed out. He hung himself. Falling headlong. In the midst. In the midst. And all his bowels gushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem. Insomuch as that field is called in their proper tongue. El Sedema. That Meaning is the that, field of blood. That is to say, the field of blood. Judas N was self murder, suicide. To all traitors of God, you're killing yourself. Right. Choose life, brothers and sisters. Amen. Repent of your sins, New York. Everything in here that haven't obeyed this message, it's time for you to walk with this now. Choose God more than weed, cigarettes, liquor, partying, gang banging, boyfriend, girlfriend. Choose God above that. Repent of your sins, meaning be sorry about all your wickedness. Be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ, because without it, you ain't never been saved. And let the Lord fill you with the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Ghost. And that's when you're filled with God. Anybody want to obey the word of God and be baptized the right way? In the name of Jesus Christ, stand on your feet. <laughs> Glory to God. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wonderful. All of you that are standing, go to the back. All of you that are standing, go to the back. All of you that are standing, go to the back. When is the world going to be convinced that the truth of God is designed by the Lord for the salvation of humanity? Then Peter said unto them, repent. That's what everybody got to do. You got to repent. Repent. If you are Baptist, you ain't baptized right. You are Methodist, you ain't baptized. You might as well line up with them. You are Mormon, you ain't baptized. And Pentecostal, you're not baptized either. You might as well get it the right way way. so you can meet the Lord in peace if you want to go back with him. The Bible says repent and be baptized. How much in New York? Every one of you. How much? Every one of you. Glory to God, how Williams? In the name of Jesus Christ. For what? For the remission of sins. That's how you get your sins washed away. And what did he promise? And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Isn't it beautiful? To be able to go everywhere. I mean everywhere in the world. And watch God. Hmm. Not Pastor Jennings. Watch God. God in us. That's right. Amen. Reconcile the world unto himself. That's right. That's what he's doing too. Bringing the human family back to him. You better get on board the truth of God train viewers and New Yorkers. This is your time. That's right. All right. We're going to be back at 5 o'clock. God be our helper. You that live in New York, you that don't, come on back. I'm, I'm the host. You the guest. 
Or should I say I'm the guest, you the host. Come on back. Don't worry about your evening uh, Sunday football game or basketball game. You come on here, I'll throw a pass at you. Amen. I'll slam dunk you with the Bible. Oh, yeah. I free throw you, Acts 238. Come on back. Let us all stand. Unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, the only wise God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be glory and power both now and forever. Brothers and sisters, say amen. amen.